What is going on, everybody? Welcome back into TTP Sports, and this Flyers team continues to find ways to amaze us, find ways to shock us, and they just keep doing their thing that they've basically been doing the entire season. I mean, a 3-1 deficit in the third period, no biggie. They just tie it right back up, no big deal. And then, you know, they finish it off in overtime. They get the full two points in Minnesota to start this road trip, especially on the first half of a back-to-back, -back, which is very crucial because tomorrow night you play in Winnipeg, and Winnipeg is one of the best teams in the NHL. So the two points tonight was crucial. One point would have been, uh, you, you could have finished it off more, but getting that second point, getting that W means so much more for tomorrow just because okay if you lose tomorrow you lost to one of the best teams in the nhl you found you found a way to win the night before in minnesota go bounce back the next game in st louis a couple of days after this you get the two points here and if you get a if you find a way to get a point tomorrow in winnipeg somehow uh, that'll be even better on the docket so hey Kudos to this team for finding a way to come back. They just keep fighting back. It doesn't matter. They're always going to give their 150% when it just kind of felt like the game was slipping from them a little bit. When I did feel like through majority of this game, the Flyers were the better team. First period, both teams come out hot. Minnesota controlled pace for a little bit. Then the Flyers basically through the back stretch of the, of the final half of that first period. I thought they were the better team. Shots were around even. And there were a good amount of chances for both sides. Both goaltenders, Hart and Flurry, were, you know, playing really good in that first period. Then you go to the second period. Then you get kind of a bullshit goal because in the Flyers zone, they, well, actually in Minnesota's zone, the Flyers turn it over where it looks like Felino closes his hand on the puck holds it for a couple of seconds and then throws it behind him and it starts a rush up for the wild and it ends up being Johansson that scores off of a couple of deflections in front of Carter Hart and into the net and suddenly it's one nothing Minnesota very early on in that second period. One, it was bullshit because the goal should never have happened because closing your hand on the puck and holding it for that long, it should have been a fucking penalty. And that should be borderline reviewable. I don't know why it's not reviewable. You got the entire Flyers bench and torts barking at the ref because the play was obvious. When you look at the replay, it's, it's eye-popping. Like, seriously, the dude holds on to the puck for mm, seconds. Seconds. It's ridiculous how that, you know, happened. And the goal stands, you're not able to review it, it was bullshit, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, it's one nothing wild. And then not so long after, the Flyers respond. They had a three-on-one to begin with, Couturier kind of screwed it up, and then the Flyers just refresh, uh, start another breakout from their own zone, Coots with a beautiful bank pass that sets up TK on the left side on a two-on-one with Joel Farabee, and... TK threads the needle between the Minnesota defender's legs and a great redirection by Joel Faraby to put it past Marc-Andre Fleury to tie the game up at one. Joel Faraby had a fantastic game today, and he definitely deserved the game that he had tonight, the result that he had tonight for the way that he has been playing for a while. I think before he scored his uh, goal tonight, the first one, he's gone scoreless in, I believe, seven, eight straight games. So that's definitely needed for a guy like Joel Faraby, who's definitely been deserving a lot more reward for the way that he's been playing. And he definitely got rewarded for his strong stuff tonight. 1-1 one, one game, basically. I believe the Flyers did get a power play through that second period and they don't score on it. Then you go to the third period. Then you get a soft goal allowed by Carter Hart after the Flyers turn it over in their own zone. They struggle to break it out. It goes the other way. One timer, the Ryan Hartman. Hart gets over in enough time, but somehow it just sneaks through his skate in the pad in the post, and it somehow bounces into the top of the net for a 2-1 Minnesota lead. That's a goal that Carter Hart would definitely want back. It looked like he got to the post in enough time, but there was just that tiny, tiny, tiny little gap between his skate and the post to where it was able to squeak through there. So Carter Hart 
you know, that definitely is a knock on his game. I will definitely say that right there. He does allow that soft goal, especially in close games, probably when he shouldn't. And maybe, you know, because it kind of felt like the Flyers, you know, you get into that third period, you started off at the tied game, you know, you take your time, you don't have to force things, you don't have to take risks, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, if you find a way to get the lead, you find a way to play a strong third period and end this game with a W. But, you know, early on in your goaltender allows a soft goal. That just can't happen. Now, that's not me saying Carter Hart the bad goaltender, unlike what some of Flyers Twitter wants to say. You know, and I guess that also replicates how strong Sam Arison has been playing, especially in this long stretch that he has been. So, I know it, it makes Carter Hart's mistakes look even larger, but can't we just argue that both goaltenders are very good? Both goaltenders, a 1A and a 1B, are very good. Carter Hart is a very good goaltender in this league. Same thing with Sam Harrison. Carter Hart makes mistakes from time to time. That's, you know, the MO of every single goaltender in the NHL. Sometimes the goals that he allows are goals that he probably shouldn't in certain cases. But, you know, Carter Hart could be the reason why you also won the game in certain situations because he did make some saves that he needed to, especially late on in the game when Minnesota, when the game was tied and Minnesota had their chances. Carter Hart definitely came up strong and also some of their chances in overtime, too. He came up strong on those as well. So we can criticize Carter Hart, but we don't have to go to insane drastic conclusions unlike some overreactors want to do. That's basically my two cents on that entire situation. But Ryan Hartman, that's where we left off. 2-1 lead right there for Minnesota. And then not that long after, another, you know, breakdown by the Flyers in the offensive zone right at the blue line in Minnesota's, you know, defensive side. Goes right back the other way, and then you get a one-timer for Boldy, which Hart has basically no chance at, and it becomes a 3-1 wild lead just like that, and you're just thinking to yourself, oh, they let this one slip away from them. That soft goal by Hart, it kind of threw off whatever momentum they had, and you just kind of felt like this was coming, because Minnesota was also playing a very strong game, too. I thought both teams definitely played very strong. The Flyers had chances. Minnesota had chances. It kind of did feel like on the rush, Minnesota was able to get back quickly. They were able to make defensive plays on the Flyers as well. So both teams, I would say, equally played a very good game tonight. It just turns out the Flyers were able to make that extra push after Minnesota took the 3-1 lead, ironically, and they end up winning this game in overtime. So Minnesota takes this 3-1 lead. Flyers, they start to, I would say, take more risks they try to get more chances. There was one shift where it kind of felt like they were trying to build off of some momentum. They had a really good, I forget which line it was. I believe it was the fourth line or the third line out there. I believe it was Forrester out there at once. They were getting good chances on Marc-Andre Fleury. And it just kind of felt like it was a little bit of a momentum booster. And then not that long after that, halfway into the period, you get a nice little break here for Scott Lawton and Tyson Forrester. Two-on-one action. Lawton finds a way to thread the needle to Forrester, who one-times it from the left circle and somehow beats Flurry on the one-timer. And hey, you're back in this game. It's 3-2 after Tyson Forrester scores. So that is definitely something that he needed because Tyson Forrester, I also thought, had a pretty good game. All over the ice, four checking, winning puck battles, finding ways to get shots on net. This is something that he needs to do more consistently. And yeah, Torts is definitely giving him a lot of chances this year. And I have seen from, you know, Flyers, Twitter, and all that stuff that Forrester might need a game in the press box. Just, you know, give himself a little bit of a rest here because Bobby Brink also didn't play in this game in his hometown. So people want to go at Torts for that. Why are you benching guys when they're about to play in their hometown? I, I can give two cents about that. This was a long time coming for Bobby Brink because his game has kind of dipped off. Like some of the other young guys on this team, some of their games have dipped off as well. So it was just Bobby Brink's turn at this point. Maybe it will be Tyson Forrester's turn at some point too. But who knows? Maybe this goal that Forrester scores tonight, maybe that sparks him into going on a little bit of a tear right here. So hopefully that could be the case because that also means, you know, for that tear because Owen Tippett, has been on a tear as of late. I believe this is his third straight game with a goal scored, and it's after the Flyers draw a penalty in the offensive zone, and they keep the puck six on five, and then just Owen Tippett with a beautiful release from the left side, just uncontested, gets guys moving, he gets some time, he gets some space, he just releases it, the quick release, the perfect accuracy, and just bullseye right on the net, tie game up, 
beautiful stuff here. Flyers, you know, just instantly they come back. They're never out of it. They're never down. They're never out. They're going to be in, somehow involved in this game till the very end. And that turns out being a tied game. So, hey, we take those any day of the week. We definitely do. I love me some Owen Tippett snipes from the left side. I definitely do. There was also one play, I believe this was in the second period, actually. I forgot to bring this up. It was on one of the Flyers' power plays. So, uh, Jamie Drysdale, if you forgot about him after only one game, <laughs> it's, it's hard to because Jamie Drysdale is so beautiful out there on the ice. This was it, like in the dying seconds of one of the Flyers' power plays in the second period. So, Drysdale, this just showcases the beautiful like skating ability that Drysdale has. Just the way that he starts at his own blue line, you know, a little give and go. I believe it was between Tippett or something or Frost or something between him and Drysdale. And Drysdale takes the puck from the blue line. Just, you know, the way that he's skating, like, you know, from the blue line to around the net, finds a way to get the puck near the net that maybe try to get a berry for one of the guys in front. He skates around the net. He gets the puck back somehow, still finds a way to set something up. Just the pure skating ability from Jamie Drysdale. It's sexy. It's sexy. That's basically what I'm trying to describe. It's sexy. It looks nice. It's beautiful. That's what, what one of the biggest things in his game is, is his skating ability. How much of a great skater that he is. That's why he's able to do the things that he's able to do. And it, he showcased that in that moment. And that was just beautiful. He also showcases his skating powers in the overtime as well. So let's get to the overtime as I, we might as well. So both teams, you know, trade their chances. Minnesota gets some of the chances early. They turn the puck over. Then the Flyers turn the puck over. Then Minnesota turns the puck over. Flyers get some chances at the other end. You get Lawton out there with Atkinson, I believe, Drysdale. Atkinson comes up from the left side, drives the net, and he draws a penalty as he gets knocked down in the Marc-Andre Fleury. So Flyers go on the power play. Eh, they get some chances here to start off, but then, you know, as the power play goes on, Drysdale's out there. I believe the way they set it up was to start off this power play, the 4 on 3 It was TK, Coots, Drysdale, and I believe Zamula out there. So they were out there for a very long time. They were maintaining puck possession. There were a few instances where Minnesota was able to clear the puck, but there was one instance where I believe the Flyers, you know, screwed up on a pass, Drysdale, the puck bounced over his stick and one of the Minnesota players pounced on it. But then you get Jamie Drysdale with the back check. I believe this was Erickson Eck or Felino. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. But the way Drysdale was, you know, it could have been a breakaway in overtime. It could have been a huge situation for Carter Hart. And it could have been a very bad situation for Jamie Drysdale just looking at face value right there in that situation. But Drysdale, especially for how long he was out there on that power play, he was probably fucking dead tired. And the way that he still skated back, the force, the breakup on that breakaway to make sure like no puck even goes in on the net. That was just some fantastic stuff there as the Flyers bring the puck back up the ice. Only, I believe, a couple of people get changes in that scenario. Zamula is still out there, so he was basically out there the entire power play. I believe Konechny was as well. I believe only two guys got changes. That was Katori and Drysdale, which was replaced by Farabee and Tippett, I believe. So, Flyers get possession back in the offensive zone. A little bit of give and go here. I think it's Zamula. I believe the give and go was between Tippett and Zamula. Zamula on the blue line. Throws the puck onto the net. And a beautiful redirection by Joel Farabee right in front of Flurry. Flyers win the game. <laughs> what do you know? Drysdale makes the great back check play. And you bring the puck back up the ice. And you score on the dying seconds of the power play. Because honestly, if you don't score in that situation, power play ends. It becomes 4-on-4. Four four. That's just what happens. You could also probably say that uh, maybe the hockey gods rewarded the Flyers there. For their impressive comeback and for the impressive back check from Jamie Drysdale, that was just nasty. That like that was just insanely nasty what Drysdale was able to do. And, and good for Joel Farabee getting that second goal to win the game, man. Like he one hundred percent deserved it. And that's just another two points for this Flyer squad that, you know, they just continue to find ways to win. That's the fun part of it. They they get a two points out of this. They could have been, you know, you probably would have been fine with the way that they came back and you found a way to get one point out of this because, oh, you were down 3-1 in the third period after Minnesota scores two goals in the third. You come back down 
from that two goal deficit and you force overtime. It's like, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, you could probably say uh, you are happy with the point at the end of the day from the circumstances, but you've found a way to get two. And I, that's the most important thing there. You found a way to get two. And that's what I love from this hockey team. That's what I love from this group. And it's the funny thing, too, is the vibes were already on so very high because if you didn't see on Twitter, I believe it was from Brendan Summerman, who was covers the Flyers. And he, he was there during the uh, warm-ups in the afternoon. And I believe it was before Travis Konechny got onto the ice. You get these goofballs out there on the ice. I couldn't tell who it was. I think Cam Atkinson was there. I think Coots was there. I couldn't tell who the rest were. But but the but these goofball idiots, they're just doing a choo-choo train line as TK's coming out on the ice. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I mean, the, the vibes are at an all-time high. That's fucking hilarious. That, that just shows how tight-knit these these bunch of goofballs are. That's basically it. These lovable bunch of idiots. <laughs> that's just the fun stuff there. Man, oh man, oh man, that's what made the vibe so, so high for today. And it ended off being a nice victory in overtime for the squad. And you do, you know, you play again tomorrow. I would assume Sam Harrison's going to be in the net tomorrow. You play tomorrow at 7 p.m. against the Winnipeg Jets. And if we're talking about the Winnipeg Jets, they have been a very good team this year. Very hot. Very, very good. No one expected them to be this good. They're the best team in the NHL right now with 60 points at 28-9-4. and four. They're just insanely good. Insanely, insanely good. They score goals, and they keep the puck out of the net. That's all you got to know there. <laughs> And they're currently on an eight-game winning streak. They are 9-0-1 in their last 10. So maybe, yes, you could say they're due for a loss. But who knows? But who knows? Maybe to the Flyers team, yes, they're due for a loss. Maybe, yes, they're due for a loss. Maybe, yes, they're due for a loss. Let's, let's, you know, let's put that in there. Maybe they're due for a loss. But that just makes it uber important that you got the two points tonight. It just makes it uber important that you got the two points tonight. That's what I see here. That's what I see. Then after that Winnipeg game... One more game on the road against St. Louis on the 15th. And then you got a four-game homestand. Basically, four, five home games in the next six after St. Louis. Dallas, Colorado, Ottawa, Tampa Bay, Boston at home. You mix in a Detroit road game in there. Got a lot of home games coming up, man. A lot of chances to go down to the bar and the Wells Fargo. And if you want to go down to the bar and use the code TTP Sports right up here, twenty dollars off your first purchase. Might as well throw that in there. Great deal. Don't pass it up. I want to see before we get to the anytime hotline because we do have a voicemail here. I want to see if there's anything on Twitter following this. Just anything from the locker room or anything on that. Uh, John Tortorella doesn't know what time they will get out of here tonight, but it made it very clear these two points and the two points against Montreal before the road trip are big for where the team is going this season. Yeah, I do find that very important. I do find that very, 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 very important. Uh, Torts also says, I trust the group that they're going to play hard and play for one another. Just a tight-knit group, man. Tight-nip-knit group. My God. My God. <laughs> love it. <sighs> love it, man. I love it. Yeah, not much else here from the uh, Twitterverse. Just a good night overall for Flyers social media. So let's get to the end-in-time hotline here. If you want to leave you know, reactions or text messages, you can leave those in the future. 215-839-985 for anything. We are going to be doing an Eagles... You know, Bucks preview tomorrow at some point. It won't be live. It'll just be a recording like this. So it'll probably be up some point in the maybe late afternoon, early evening or something like that, depending on when I get time to do it. And then, you know, after tomorrow's Flyers game, we'll also do a recap there. So you can leave your thoughts down for those two. Sunday, probably not going to do anything. And then, you know, Monday is basically when we get to uh, Eagles Bucks. That'll prob that'll be a watch party. That'll be a live stream. Then a reaction, basically following that. So definitely stay tuned for all of that stuff. But for uh, right now, so you guys can uh, listen to me. Shut up. Let's get to uh, the end time outline here. Let's get to Sean. See what he has to say after this nice victory by the Orange and Black. Big win for the Orange and Black tonight, and nice to see them rewarded in overtime with the victory. 
had to overcome a lot of adversity tonight. I mean, the first goal Minnesota gets shouldn't have counted. And then you have Bullshit. a greasy goal that I'm sure Carter Hart would like to have back. But, you know, again, 3-1 down in the third against a team that's tough to play against, especially when they have the lead, and you rally back and win it, that, that speaks a lot for the heart and determination of this Flyers team. And I got to say this off topic because I didn't really touch on it as far as the Gautier thing. Look, I give full marks to Briere, Jones, and Hilferty for the way that they've handled this. He's not here because he didn't want to be here. And if he doesn't want to be here, we don't want him here. And Jamie Drysdale is showing his skills. I mean, he almost was the goat in overtime, but he makes up for it with a hell of a back check, and you can see this kid's skills on display. The Flyers may have stole something here. Big win for the Flyers. going to be tough to win tomorrow night, but at least you got two tonight to build off of. Yeah, tomorrow's game is going to be uh, incredibly difficult. Yeah, that's why getting two. That's why I stress getting two points tonight was the most important thing because that can, you know, make anything that happens in Winnipeg tomorrow just, you know, a little bit more understandable. But, uh, yeah, Trysdale, man, he's nice. He's nice. He's nice. He, he's really fun to watch. He is really fun to watch. That play that he made on the power play, it didn't result in anything, but it was just pleasing to the eye. It, it, it made me feel things. That, that's basically it. <laughs> it made me feel things. <laughs> that a Flyers player hasn't maybe felt in a long time, but that's probably a lie because, you know, Travis Konechny, you know, he's been amazing and all that stuff. You know, Carter Hart when he's amazing. But it's just, it's just like that extra oomph that Drysdale has done in these two games. It's it's fun. It's fun. That's basically it. Fun. And fuck Cutter Gautier. We don't care about him anymore. It's funny, I think they showed a bunch of people going to the Boston College game tonight in Flyers gear. And I think some people in Boston, I think some of the guards didn't let them in at first just because they were wearing Flyers gear and they knew what, exactly what those guys were going to do. I, I found that funny. No, personally, I found that funny. I love this fan base <laughs> to death. Flyers hockey is back, baby. It definitely is. <laughs> well, yeah, great win by the boys. Great win by the boys. So let's see what uh, they can do tomorrow. Let's see what they can do tomorrow against the uh, best team in the NHL and the Winnipeg Jets. That's honestly a very shocking story. No one expected Winnipeg to be this good. But hey, they're this good. And uh, we'll see how uh, we fare against uh, that very strong team. So that'll do it for tonight, everybody. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'd like to see those. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button. does me a great deal of service. Also use the code DTP Sports. $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Great deal. Don't pass it up. Great win by the Flyers. Let's see what they do tomorrow. And that's basically it there. We'll also have the Eagles uh, Bucks preview up tomorrow as well. So stay tuned for that. Leave any, uh, you know, opinions about that in the voicemail box down below. And we'll leave it there. So as for now, I'll see you guys next time.